Hello gang gang gang, welcome back 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 to this little corner of the internet where I stick 10 minutes on the clock and tell you a true crime story. We are on the road to 5k subscribers and we're almost there. I don't even know what I'm going to talk about when we finally reach our milestone but if you enjoy my content if you want to make a dining room sleuth day then hit that button tell your mates drop a comment uh, on this video and that would be so much appreciated uh anyway let's get to business today we are taking a trip to scotland and i think it's our first time on this series doing so which is interesting uh it was this week in 1992 that amanda duffy a 19 year old drama student was killed and her murder has never officially been solved i'm going to tell you all about it so welcome to the anniversary I want to start by telling you that almost everyone who knows about this case, who speaks about this case, all of the resources that I found and listed in the description below, believe that they know who killed Amanda Duffy. There is evidence in the case of who killed her, both forensic, witness and circumstantial, but this person was never brought to justice. And when the main and only suspect, Francis Old, died after a short battle with cancer in 2017, it left the Duffy family, Amanda's family, with little chance of a resolution in the case of their lost loved one. But I'm gonna start on the night of May 29th, 1992, 29 years ago this week. Amanda was five foot four with long red hair and she just received some wicked news. She was 19 and had been called to audition at the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama. It's ranked even currently as one of the best schools in the world and her and her friends were out for a night to celebrate the brilliant advance in Amanda's dreams. She wanted to be an actress. When the night drew to a close in the early hours of May 30th, Amanda met Francis Ald, who was 20, who she knew from school, at the taxi rank and the two got talking. Her friends, according to unsolvedmurders.co.uk, left the pair there speaking, having no idea that it would be the last time that they would see Amanda alive. Her body was found the next evening in an area of waste ground near a car park at Miller Street, which is in Hamilton, South Lanarkshire. She was found lying on her back, she was naked from the waist down, and her face and head were covered in blood. She had pieces of wood forced into parts of her body and she died from blunt force trauma to the back of her head and she was strangled and she inhaled her own blood. Dr. Marie Cassidy said that Amanda's body had also been mutilated. Twigs had been forced up her nostrils so violently that one fractured her skull. Branches were forced into her mouth and into her private parts. She had a broken nose, bruises and abrasions consistent with stamping and her jaw was broken in two places. According to the post-mortem examination, she died between 1.30am and 1.30pm, a huge 12-hour window. And this was just a savage, savage attack. Francis Old was arrested. After all, he was the last person seen with Amanda. There was a bite mark found on her breast, which was a match to his dental pattern. He never denied it, though. He said that it was a love bite. He said that she was alive when he left her. He said, yes, he met her at the taxi rank, but she wandered off with a dude called Mark. Although Mark has never been identified, he has never been found. And there was hair at the crime scene as well. It matched Francis, but in the early 90s, DNA wasn't what it is now. And there was only a 1 in 12 chance of the hair actually belonging to him. But the trial went ahead. Francis didn't give evidence on his own behalf, though. Uh, his defence stuck to his story. Him and Amanda, apparently, they walked away from the taxi rank and they kissed and cuddled in a couple of door shopways before she went off with this phantom of the opera that is Mark. Now, the love bite that he claims to have given her was deemed by an expert to be excruciatingly painful and was inflicted within an hour prior to death. I'm not sure what Francis at the time believed a love bite was, but to have the indentations of teeth, to be able to be forensically and dentally matched back to him, sir, sir, 
I'm gonna need you to collect yourself and come better than that. And despite the prosecution and the police in this case believing that it was a slam dunk, open and shut, definitely this dude is guilty and going away for a long time type of case. There was screaming and shouting from the public benches at the High Court in Glasgow as the verdict was announced. A majority verdict from the jury of eight women and seven men acquitted Francis Old. The verdict was listed as not proven, which is pretty interesting because Scotland, unlike most of the world's legal systems, has three possible verdicts in criminal cases. Guilty, that's it, go to jail. Not guilty, a man didn't do it, so left him alone. And not proven, which is defined as this. The legal implications of a not proven verdict are exactly the same as a not guilty verdict. Now, the two verdicts have the same impact as they're both acquittals and there are no legal consequences for the accused if they receive a not proven verdict. They are still seen as not guilty and innocent in the eyes of the law. And there's a lot of controversy and discussion in Scotland about the availability of a not proven verdict because research shows that jurors may think that not proven is a halfway house between guilty and not guilty. Of course, the burden is that you have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Whereas research has shown that jurors in Scotland do the not proven verdict when they've got some doubt, but it's, it's, a, it's not unreasonable, it's not reasonable, and they kind of do the hokey cokey between the two. So that's just something to, that's just something that I found crazy interesting. But that's the case in Scotland anyway. I think in a case like this, what makes it so frustrating is when the police or the prosecutors or whoever come with just that oh we're gonna slam dunk it energy like we're gonna this is a type of case maybe they don't apply themselves as much as they should do maybe they don't explain the forensic the blood the dna the hair whatever type of evidence and the weight and gravity of it to the jury enough i actually read in an article and i'm going to link it below for you that one of the forensic scientists who testified at trial feels that he didn't do enough to explain exactly what the bite mark evidence meant in this case exactly what the hairs that were matched to Francis meant in this case and because he didn't take the time to do that the jury may not have been just conscious of how damning and how much this actually puts Francis smack bang in the middle of the frame. Amanda's mum Kate collapsed outside the courthouse after hearing the verdict and she had to receive treatment. Her parents launched a civil case against Francis Ald. Now, the burden of proof in a civil case is lower than a criminal court, but Francis was found responsible and he was ordered to pay the Duffies 50K. They never got that money, which is actually what happened in the case of OJ Simpson as well. It's not one that I've covered here on the anniversary, but it's on my list of ones to cover and definitely super, super famous within the true crime circles. Even though he was acquitted in the criminal trial, he was found guilty at civil court and all of the money that he earned or, or anything that he did that profited off of the murder of his ex-wife and her friend went to his ex-wife's family. And that was kind of it in the case of Amanda Duffy and her potential killer, Francis Old. Now, he lived his life, he got married, he met a woman, they moved to Shanghai for a bit, but the Duffy family were left with a hole in their home. They campaigned to get the not proven verdict removed from Scottish law and they also tried to get a retrial in this case as well because double jeopardy rules introduced in 2011 in Scotland meant that an accused person who was once acquitted for a crime could be retried later if they admitted their guilt or if significant new evidence emerges. Very similar to the law change in England and the case of Stephen Lawrence that I actually covered on this series and I'll pop a link up somewhere for you to have a look in case you haven't seen that one. So the Crown Office, in the case of Amanda Duffy, wanted to use the change in the double jeopardy laws to secure a retrial and the crux of this is that you need new, new, new evidence in a case in order for it to be considered. Now, with leaps in DNA technology, the Duffy family thought that this was their chance to finally get some justice for their daughter. The hairs that I spoke about a little bit earlier, well, advancements in testing now put them at one in one billion in favour of them belonging to Francis Old. But the prosecution didn't lead with this in their proposal because the actual original evidence had 
had been destroyed after the trial. They tried to secure a retrial by submitting confessions in the case of Francis Old. This was in 2016, so years after Amanda was killed. The new evidence that they submitted to the Court of Criminal Appeal in Edinburgh involved a number of statements allegedly made by Francis Old to various different witnesses. They included conversations with a prison officer that happened in June of 1992 when Francis was in custody, but he only told everyone about them in 2012. I'm not entirely sure why he did that. Well, we do know why. Apparently he told one of his uh, supervisors, uh, superiors about it, and they were like, nah, Alex, that's hearsay. It won't stand up in a court of law. Of course it would stand up. If the man accused of murder has told you or alluded to the fact that he is guilty, tell somebody before, before 10 years too late, please. Tell somebody before the court case. Come through as a witness, darling. The application for a new trial was never granted. Francis Old died on the 8th of July, 2017, in a hospice at the age of 46 years old. He suffered from pancreatic cancer. And with his death, many believe, like I told you at the top of this episode, that the truth about Amanda Duffy's murder will never be known. And for some, the Duffy family included, Francis Old is a man who got away with murder. And there you have it, the story of the murder of Amanda Duffy and Francis Old, the man who potentially got away with it. So I have linked all of the links that I used for my research in the description. Please take advantage of it if I've tantalized you enough to research into this story. Amanda Duffy's family have never received answers and they, they have battled tirelessly to try and find the man responsible, the person responsible for what happened to their daughter and they truly believe that it was Francis Old. I want to know what you think as well. Do you think Francis was guilty? Do you think that he got away with murder or do you think it could have been someone else, namely the phantom that was Mark? Let me know in the comments and um, thank you for watching. I'll be back next week with another true crime episode. Uh, 10 minutes goes past really, really quickly and I'm working on ways to deliver more true crime content throughout the week. But obviously, like, I have a job and stuff, so. But, yeah, Road to 5K, subscribe and I will see you next week.